to an unmarried youth. So in Indian philosophy there are many stages of life and the two stages that I would reference here are Brahmacharya and Grahastha. So the state of being unmarried and youthful and then the next stage which is being married. So if for example you have a free software meeting at uh, my office in Bangalore, uh, you will get something like 20 men and one woman and all the 19 men or most of the 19 men will ask the single woman 
for her phone number and she'll never come to the next uh, free software meeting. So okay, you can ask my phone number, I'll still keep coming. <laughs> so it is uh, traditionally known as a very hostile moment uh, to women, a very poor gender representation in the free software movement, even worse than the traditional IT industry. Uh, and a uh, movement which takes meritocracies, meritocracy so seriously that they've lost their manners. So if you get on to various mailing lists and uh, IRC channels, uh, unless the community has gone out of their way to make themselves friendly, can be a very hard community to penetrate and work with. So I'm hoping that the free software developers will fall in love, get married, and the movement will move to a grahastha stage where it will be much more uh, welcoming and uh, will allow a larger population to grow, join their ranks. Correct. Trust Sunil to come up with analogies which none of us will actually think of. But there are efforts being made. At least there is a very, there is a program I would actually recommend for all of you to check out which is called Outreach Program for Women which is being run by the GNOME Foundation and there are certain other such efforts to have some gender balance. I want to say that one woman can kick 19 people. I think I have to beep here or ask, that's why she's enough. But I'm going to move on to Prashant now for his comments and then Dr. Day and Satish. Uh, yes, but it's not that it's esoteric, it's like See, if somebody wants a mobile phone, they just want a phone that works. They're really not bothered about I don't think uh, at least not even maybe five percent really understand that under an Android phone there's a Linux operating system. So definitely uh, ten years back it was like uh, Linux was a bit difficult to use, free software was a bit difficult to use, but that's not the case now. But people are not really that worried about the freedoms that come along with. So that will require a little bit of teaching, a little bit of people trying to understand the issues related to surveillance, privacy. I mean, I think if people are really made to understand what are the problems with privacy and posting everything on Facebook, then people will be a bit more bothered about that. Same issue with free software. If you people, if you be, sorry, if you make people more aware of what are the issues of proprietary system and standards, proprietary software, then definitely I think they will look at the free software option and try to understand what exactly is free software and what are the freedoms as such. Uh, Professor Days online, he wants to comment on this? One minute, Professor Day. I see it's the Android phone, so you'll have to be a little patient. Sorry about that. I think now you, we can hear you. Hello. Hello, yeah, Prashant. What was the question? Uh, Professor Day, I had asked why uh, free and open source software seems esoteric right now. Why is the general public not uh, so sensitive about the advantages which uh, FOSS offers despite its ubiquitous presence? Whoops. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't think I answered the question even now, there's too much echo. I'm going to let Satish uh, respond and I will just tell you what my question is so that you can answer it in a minute. Yeah, so thanks, Dr. Uh, question. He ascribes to free and open source software is a function of how well developed the society is. Uh, so, in other words, uh, this is a uh, uh, the value is you know basically dependent on uh, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of uh, needs. So, you start valuing freedom when more
at par with uh, the developed world. Recently, there was an incident where two women were bashed up. Uh, and why were they bashed up? Because they, uh, on their Facebook page, they wrote about a movie, a particular movie just been released, uh, that the movie was lousy. And the fans association guys came and bashed them up. Now, this is incredible. Now, even if you have the technology there, if you do not have the fundamental acceptance in society that women can make statements and they have the right to do that, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, the rest of it, it, I mean, it doesn't follow that we can then uh, utilize or leverage the, the full potential of these technologies. So in that sense, I think we have a long way to go, uh, most parts of India, uh, in, in the found much more fundamental issues, uh, which are to be valued first, before we come to free software itself. But having said that, I'm not uh, completely kind of uh, bearish about uh, free software's penetration. There's a lot of interest, but this is largely in certain demographies, that, uh, certain constituencies, which are more educated, uh, which are willing to look at alternatives, etc. Thank you. Dr. Day, is he there? Oh. Dr. Day, I think we'll be joining. We, yeah, we're already running over time. It's 3.10. We I will just have Dr. Day to make a comment. We could not talk about software and uh, the software product industry, but I will let Dr. Day comment. Yes, Dr. Day, we can hear you now. Uh, okay, I'll address that question about awareness of uh, free software. I think that, that was the issue. Uh, the, let me mention, uh, let me begin with a, uh, an earlier question. Uh, how you deal with awareness of information technology uh, as such. Uh, I found um, that uh, people working in large corporations, modern corporations, are also not aware of free software and its intricacies and, and what it really means. Um, so communicating free software is very hard. Uh, one has to begin at a prior stage of just talking about what the software means and why, why it is important for us. Uh, why ICTs matter as such. Uh, that's one. Now, the good news is that because of the proliferation of hardware and devices uh, with a large number of people having such uh, things, uh, the task of communicating what software does is somewhat easier, although still very hard. Um, so that's the broader framework within which I would answer this question. Uh, free software has uh, many things going for it uh, within schools. Uh, I know uh, I've, I've been doing this study with Satish for a while. Uh, within schools, there have been movements to introduce free software, free software in the curriculum. We've looked at close to seven states, and in all of them, uh, there has been a pushback. Uh, people have tried things. Uh, schools, many schools have very earnestly tried to work on free software, but uh, well, the very powerful proprietary software lobby has uh, has won out uh, in, in most cases. Uh, however, we as a community we cannot give up. Uh, I believe the fight has to be at that level in schools and colleges uh, because of the nature of free software. That is where it is going to make the biggest difference, and that is where we can hope to make this uh, connection. Now there are instances and isolated instances one can find where free software has made uh, such a massive inroad uh, that there are many people now who are aware of it and are spreading the word through word of mouth. Uh, there is no government that backs it effectively other than the governments like Venezuela or even Turkey, uh, maybe certain, certain parts of Latin America, uh, Argentina in particular where free software has been actively promoted by the government. Uh, in other cases, it has not, and that has been a tragedy for India also. The software has not only to be provided for through legislation, it also has to be actively uh, communicated as to what its value is. Uh, I don't hope our governments will do that in the near future, but the community has to. And I'm very happy to say that, uh, you know, the communities like the ones in Karnataka or, or Kerala or Maharashtra are very active and they are uh, working on this. Uh, thanks. I hope I addressed the, the question. Yes, you did. And we've run over time. But thank you for this discussion. I hope that people will 
think about this issue and start asking the question how to resist the resistance with the help of freedom which, and which can help us remove all impediments, all Im obstacles to the free flow of information and, pro and protect us from whatever eyes are watching us. Thank you so much for this discussion. Thank you, Satish. Thank you, Dr. Day. Uh, oh, there's no time. If people have to go for another session because we started late, so I'm sorry there are no questions. But you can always um, reach out to people on the panel. Satish Babu, please check out. He's on Twitter. His organization is called ICFOS. Ramki is very active. Dr. Day is at IMM. I'm Bangalore and very active. Uh, Prashant is at SFLC.in. Sunil is at Center for Internet and Society, Bangalore, CIS, uh, hyphen India.org and sflc.in and I am also from there. So please uh, feel free to chit chat and um, whatever questions you might have to make sense of it. I'm sure everybody is happy to engage and answer. Thank you everyone and thank you for attending.